Welcome to another episode of the Drift Car Build-Off presented by Spec Clutch and Coil Rad. Today we're going to show you how to inspect the rod bearings on your S54 E46 M3 engine. Today is all about checking those potentially troublesome rod bearings on these S54 motors. As a lot of you guys know, there was a factory recall on them early on, and this motor was in fact covered under that factory recall. So the bearings were apparently done at about 50,000 kilometers. And so we weren't sure if we were gonna check them or not. And we mentioned that during, I think, the first video where we started to pull the motor out, and a lot of you guys commented that man, you really, need to, you really need to look at those those bearings. And we've been consulting with a bunch of experts on these motors, and the consensus is yes, check the bearings and be prepared to change them out because this thing has another 250 kilometer, 50,000 kilometers on it since they were changed Correct. out. Correct, yeah. So they're definitely worth inspecting. I've actually downloaded a E46 M3 manual from a website called emanualsonline.com, and they have a whole plethora of manuals and they're really cheap it's like 14 to 25 dollars to buy one and you have everything and for this car we figured you know what we've done a lot of honda work but we haven't done a lot of bmws and i feel like if you mess up on one of these the the cost of fixing something that you screw up is expensive so we want to do it right the first time and uh, as i said this is a pretty great resource for so check it out emanualonline.com there will be a link in the description so where do we start here? We're gonna unplug some connectors, take this rubber hose off, and then we're going to remove the actual oil pan. We're now ready to remove our oil pan slash sump, whatever you want to call it. And uh, DP noticed we've got some curious wear marks on this area here and right in this area here that I suspect is from the subframe. Um, we're not exactly sure why we are thinking maybe the motor mounts were broken, which caused excessive play, but uh, if you know what this is, or if this is a common problem, by all means, post in the comments. So, to remove all of these bolts, I think what we're gonna do is start from the middle and work our way out in a crisscross pattern. We've run into a little bit of inf interference with this uh, power steering bracket and I'm just in the process of removing it to get at one of the bolts in the back side. So do note that you will have to remove this to get at that bolt. So naturally once these bolts are loose, what you wanna do is take them all out and really there is no order here. And I don't know if BMW also specifies whether you need to go in a crisscross pattern. So if you want to remove these in whatever way, the manual did not state that. That was just me kind of being OCD. Do take note of the way the bolts do come out because as I found out, some are longer than others. And if you want to be really fancy, of course, you can drop this fancy diagram like I did and make sure to lay them out in exactly the, the order they came out in. And the moment of truth, time to remove this oil pan. Got my pry bars out. Thankfully, BMW has left a bunch of nice spots that lift up on, oh, that came off Super very easy. easily. Yeah. That means I think there is a gasket on here, but there's also silicone as well. You also notice we did straighten out the motor because if you, we left it on that angle, all the oil in the pan would have rushed out onto the side of the block and we definitely don't want to deal with that. So let's see if I can remove this on my own here. I just got to clear these It's real tight lines. to the power steering pump there. Yeah, you. it is. It's just a, I wonder if it's not going to make it. Right it might there, not it make it. Light. All right, Should well. Not clear, huh? The instructions said to remove it. I should have listened to them. So we are pulling that oil pump, or power steering pump. 
take two here. Let's see if I can just clear those lines. And we are up and off. Woo. Look at the patina. Wow. <laughs> there. Holy moly. She dark. She is. As you can see here, we've got an oil pump and the pickup all in the way of most of these uh, rod bearings here. So we're gonna start off right at the end. This one is conveniently placed upwards and we're just gonna back them off nice and slowly. I don't know, Woo. oh yeah. Oh, it's got some torque in them, huh? We certainly do. Where's Moose when you need them? There we go, all right. And I'll get Back to this guy here. All right. Slowly, okay, that one's loose here. And there we go. See, if this was me, Pete, I just would have taken the impact gun on it. Yeah. I don't want to do that. You care to, too we're much. We're trying to here. show people to do this the right way. You're trying to be a pro. Yeah, well. I love it. And I don't know all about the, the stretching and the torque and backing stuff off, so I just want to be careful with it. With the bolts out, now it is time to gently tap a rod bearing end, there it goes, and it just came off. And the moment of truth. Ooh. 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 Actually, like? these do not look that bad. Upon further inspection, you can actually see there is a decent amount of wear on these sides here. So if this was a perfect bearing, you wouldn't have this type of marking around here. So before I rotate the crank here to bring up the rods in the middle, which I think are three and four, which is what we're gonna check next. Uh, I put the rod cap bearing back on number six, because you don't wanna be spinning this when it's disconnected, and this is now gonna make some noise. Look at that high Whoa. compression racing that engine. Mm. There they are, they're coming around. Oh yeah, all right, let's put these in right there. That looks good enough. All right. Oh, man. The Germans like their high torque specs, they huh? They do, they do. And they are 12 point, so you better have a 12 mil, 12 point socket for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm very eager to see what this one looks like. I suspect it's gonna be the same. Oh, it's hard to get out of here. Knock that one off. Not yet. Just use an air chisel, PT. Oh yeah, that would be good. There it goes. Okay. Oh wow. This one actually looks much better. So upon closer inspection of this one, you can see there's wear patterns on the outsides, but the center looks pretty good. So I'd say this one is in almost overall better shape than cylinder number six. However, we did notice a lot of peculiar wear on the sides here, mm -hmm. which brings up the question of roundness and torquing these bolts. And there's a, a whole trove of internet talk about um, what rod bolts to use. There's ARP ones and there's the stock ones. Some people say using the stock ones uh, is better because they provide, uh, I think, a, a stronger tensile uh, torque where the ARP ones are more consistent which keep it rounder so who knows but uh, I'll leave that to you guys we're definitely not experts in terms of what to do with that kind of stuff we are gonna do one more just for the sake of it because well two is good but three I think will give us a tall tale sign of exactly what this motor looks like in terms of where Wow, this one here has a ton of wear in this area. Mm -hmm. So I think it is safe to say we are in for a full rod bearing recall. So thank you to all of you guys that said, you know what, check this out because it, you may need to do it. And sure enough, we certainly do. Man, I'm just admiring how roasted this bearing is and it's right through the coating. So uh, we have some decisions to make about what to do about replacing these. Do we want to go with OE bearings again? Do we want to go to say King bearings, which are recommended by a lot of uh, experts in the field? Or do we want to go to the VAC Motorsports kit, which seems to be 
considered what's the most robust solution for it, but it's also on the pricey side. So we'll have to decide how much we want to spend, how far we want to go. Do we want to use ARP rod bolts or OE bolts? We've got some thinking to do. We're going to consult with the experts that we know in this field, including, including Ian at Bray Krause and Ben at Hack Engineering. And you guys let us know in the comment section too. We know lots of you guys out there are E46 M3 guys. So let us know what you think is going to work best in our application. I think we're gonna call this a wrap, but before we do that, I'm gonna mention a uh, live Q&A session that we're gonna be doing on YouTube at 6 p.m. Pacific time or 9 p.m. Eastern Standard where we are. That's gonna be on January 17th, and it's not actually a live stream. It's a, it's a private hangout session where those of you who sign up for it for a fee, I think, of $5, and that $5 will go directly to us to help support the channel, so it's not like uh, YouTube's just making money off you guys. <laughs> You're actually helping us support it. And you can kind of think of it as a speed dating opportunity where when you sign up and you join this, this private hangout, you get two or three minutes of one-on-one -on -one time with us in like a video conference format where you can ask us anything from why we chose to buy an M3 with high mileage and end up having to do a rod bearing job or uh, why Peter prefers to go skiing when Moose and I are pulling motors out of his car. So on that happy note, I will say thank you very much for watching everyone. We really appreciate all the support. Give us a thumbs up for more S54 madness. Hit the subscribe button if you want to stay in touch with what we decide to do on these bearing jobs. And uh, if you want some Speed Academy swag, go check out speedacademy.shop where we can sell you hats, sweatshirts, or even some go fast parts. Oh, oh. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Should I? Oh. Pull it back and then it'll go into that other pan. Well, I think it's. Oh, 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 we got pissing everywhere.